Okay, I would like to know in specific, um, can you visualize the project uh, you're doing? When you show it, when you present it to the rest of the world, how do you show these topics you are talking about? Yes, this is another very uh, important issue. That our previous project, it has a lot of visual uh, materials first. No? So, and, and now it, it is very hard for us. It's still, uh, I mean, we don't have, and this was my issue in Berlin. Yes, of course, describing this, they would tell me, okay, how then you will describe the other image you are speaking about. And I, I have to say we are still in the process. The first step we are doing is that we will be issuing this dictionary of exile together with refugees. So we are already writing this dictionary of exile. So our first um, delivery in this project would be this dictionary. You know, and this dictionary done in the camp together with refugees. And, and then from there, what we... Um, are trying to do, there are a lot of projects that we already did that goes into this direction. And I will tell you a story of this plaza and, and uh, that we did in Pawar. And it's very much into this new ways of representation. And this plaza in, uh, in Pawar, it was, you know, the first time that there is any manifestation of public or if of common, let's put it this way, in, in the camp. Because so far, what is happening, because refugees are all the time looked at as relief subjects, so as people that need help, that needs... So all the, uh, the way that they were helped all the time by helping them in terms of numbers, in terms of individuals, in terms of, you know, he is in a need of a tent, he is in a need of food, he is in, as a family, and... The only thing that was not looked at seriously in the past 60 years is what, where is the refugees' collectivities come? How they would act as collective? Because we all the time, and the way, and again, returning back to the image, universal image I was speaking about, the world cannot see refugees as collectivity. They see them as single individuals in the need of immediate support and help. They were not ever looked at as collectivity. So what we are trying to understand, where are the collectivity taking place? Should we help into actually developing this concept of uh, uh, collectivity? And what we did is that we went to Fawar camp, and it is one of the most conservative camps in the West Bank. And we began to understand with the people what are their needs, and one of the things coming out of the special mothers, they would like to have places inside the camp where their kids could play, no? So we interpret, as, as architects, you interpreted these needs as they need a plaza, no? This, this would be your immediate uh, reaction. And then when they heard the word plaza, they were so anxious as community, no? They thought that what he will be doing is the plaza in terms of the Western way of looking at the plaza, which means, you know, a place where men, women, everybody would be coming together. This is not part of their culture. This is not... So we went there and we began to say, okay, if this is not the model, then what is the model of a plaza in a conservative refugee camp like the one of Pawar? And we began to discuss with people. And first, we began to understand what would, what would be the activities that they would be doing there. And my discussion was with the ladies, for example, would you go out and drink some coffee or tea in the plaza? And, and they were absolutely opposing this idea, saying that this would be impossible in their culture to go out. And then they were saying, but if it is a more, it's not a leisure, but it's a cultural activity, we will be going there, no? So if, if there is a film that you will be doing in the plaza, we will go. If there is a, but to go out in order just like, you know, ledger and have coffee and tea, it's, it, this is something that is unacceptable in our life. And then the second thing they were asking, they wanted a closed plaza. No, and I was just like, what do you mean by closed plaza? It's, it's a plaza, it needs to be open, it's collectivity, it's open for everybody. So what does it mean to have a closed plaza? No? And the whole idea there is that it's not a plaza, they need a plaza where, this is for them was crucial, not everybody would happen there by chance. So there is, the surprise moment is not there, that you arrive and you find yourself suddenly in the plaza. This is what they did not want. They wanted people 
to do the action of entering into the plaza, which means that they will take the responsibility to enter into this plaza because for them, this was the only way in the absence of a state and in the absence of anyone that would administrate this plaza, this is the only way that you will decide yourself and have a self-responsibility of being part of this place. Because if they will lose this, then they cannot anymore control the plaza. So what, was, what happened is that with all the neighbors, each one of them begins to really uh, um, get back the design, how high the wall should be in front of his home. And then looking at the design at the end, it was amazing to see that what we did finally was the house without the roof. Again, returning back to the Palestinian idea of not building the roof, the plaza in Fawar camp ended up by being four walls plaza without a roof and with four doors that would permit you to enter and get out. After six years of working in the plaza, this was the longest project that we did because it seems banal. It seems, you know, four walls and the plaza. But this was a whole year's discussion with them how the plaza could be represented in a wall. What is the name of the, the main, what is the mean of Agora in, in, uh, no, in refugee camps? How this might work? In which way collectivity might take place? Where people would sit and see. After six years, I went back to the same women I discussed with them at the beginning, the idea of uh, you know, them getting out to have coffee and tea, because I heard from many people that there is a lot of activities going on among them, the tea and the coffee and other things. So when I went there and tried to understand, they felt at the beginning accused. I told them, why did you tell me that you will not you know, be, be using? How, how was this? Why was this? And one of the women admit that the, the day before, she was out in the plaza to have dinner with her husband. No, it's, it's not only the tea and the coffee, but the, the dinner. So once they felt that they could, I, I was trying to elaborate with them what happened. I told them, you know, I'm so happy that you are doing this. I'm not telling you why did you tell me. And you, so let's, let's elaborate together what was the main point. And their idea was maybe, you know, the fact that we had that, strict alleys in the camp, there was no way for us to do such practice. No, and if, if you want to sit in the streets with your chairs, then anybody that would pass in the street would not be able to pass. We will close the streets if we, and, and they, they were thinking that in, before in their former village, actually this was one of the main practice that they had before, and, and then they stopped to have it, and as if this became their culture, and by having a place that would permit, again, that collectivity to take place, they begin to think this is the way we uh, would uh, like to use this collective uh, place. And it's still, you know, very difficult, very problematic, in a very conservative uh, camp. How would you think about collectivity? How would you... It, these are all questions, and for me, this is the common. This is creating a collective common of the camp where they would reflect upon who they are, and we would reflect together with them. So what's happening all the time? It's not, it's my project. It is a project where many people from the camp would be involved. So if you want to ask who is the architect of this plaza, it's, it's like a lot of people from the camp that were part of it, that design it, that take it out. That, and they were really telling me that one of the most surprising things for them that they did not think ever that there is something like this in the world. Because the only model they had for a plaza was the Western model. And they never imagined that they will be able to create their own model of collectivity. No? And, and in which way we could create our own models of collectivity without necessarily... And, and this, this is part of the whole imagination part. And what, what to look at the camp, to understand what the camp is, and then to understand how you would reshape the whole idea and imaginary of the camp together with refugees. So for me, this plaza, we did a school in Shafat camp, again, returning back to this idea how to, and many people would look at the school and say, this is normalization, this is, you know, again, the whole, all discourse, while in our mind, this school is representing a new way where, the whole classroom in and out, in, in, the, the school is made by cluster of classrooms, and each classroom 
have an indoor and outdoor garden where you know the whole idea of the village would return back and each class would be looked at as like the camp and the exile together and the